What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Scales 13. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you what it's like to own an Aki monitor. What is it like to own an Aki monitor? All right guys, so of course the first question we wanna answer is, when is the animal most active, right? Well, for Aki's, the question, the answer to that question is kind of funny. The question is sometimes, when are Aki's not active? <laughs> Come here, buddy. So, Aki monitors are of course a diurnal species. This is an early morning species. What I mean by that is, when the sun comes up in the morning, or, depending on your light cycle, when your lights turn on in the morning, within 10 to 15 minutes on average, from my experience with thunder, these guys come out and bask periodically for the first hour that they're awake. And after that, they're tongue flicking and running and checking stuff out and just being an inquisitive all day long. They're digging, running around, looking for food. And that's one thing that I really love about the Aki monitor. If you're home on the weekends or if you just have a decent amount of time to observe a reptile during the day, this is an awesome species to keep because these guys are so entertaining. I've had my Aki monitor for about two years now and I'm still so enthusiastic and so impressed by the species. This is everything that a monitor lizard gives you as far as being an intelligent animal and surprising you with how intelligent the animal actually is, but in a smaller package. I know some people may look at Aki monitor and just think that it's not as intelligent as a water monitor or one of the larger species, just of course because of the size of the animal and because of the size of the brain, as uh, some people may believe. But let me tell you guys, definitely no lack of intelligence in an Aki monitor. This is a very intelligent species, as you can see. Thunder actually just walked right up to my hand. Look at this, guys. See? He's actually checking my hand out, <laughs> trying to dig through it like, a, like it's substrate. So that's kind of funny. I guess if you want to say that's non-intelligent, then okay. But as you can see, this animal recognizes me as its owner or even if it doesn't understand the concept of owner, which I'm sure it doesn't, it knows that I am a positive part of the animal's life. And as you can see, he's just wandering around checking things out. <laughs> so yeah, guys, this is definitely a daytime species and a very intelligent species. They're very active. And if you're a person where the only time that you're home is in the dead of night, where you don't get home until midnight, then this might not be the species for you because then you're gonna miss out on all of the awesome things that Aki monitors do unless you have some type of reverse light cycle. But that is an entirely different story. So if you, if you wanna know what that is, just look that up, punch it in Google. It is a very easy answer to that. Is an Aki monitor easy to handle? And the answer to this question requires a little bit more of an explanation rather than a it's good to handle or not good to handle. Now, as you can see, Thunder's not afraid of me. He's doing his own thing. He's walking around. And, but of course, the last scene where you saw Thunder running up to me and crawling into my hand, you may think, oh, wow, that means this animal's super awesome and it's great to handle. And honestly, they are good for handling, but everything is by their terms and they're not a lazy animal. I kind of look at an Aki monitor and its activity level to be similar to something like a ferret. And this same description has been given before. And of course it's a reptile, it's a varanid, it's not a mammal. But what we mean by that is this animal's not going to keep still for a long amount of time. As you can see, Thunder moves every couple seconds. He doesn't sit still for long periods of time. So for a person that wants to have an animal sit on his chest while they're watching a movie or just hang out while it plays video games and not really pay attention to it while it sits on the side of the couch, that's not what this animal is for. This animal is a kid that has a ton of energy and can't sit still. 
Akimars just love to crawl around and explore, as you can see. And what you have to do is you have to be willing to give up some of your own control and allow the animal to do what it wants to do. Wow, <laughs> this reminds me of that scene from Jurassic Park. And just let the animal explore and do its own thing. But in the beginning, when you receive an Aki monitor, the animal's not going to be too confident with your presence. Remember, you're a giant compared to this animal. And this animal sees you as a dangerous predator. So what you want to do is you want to let the animal get used to your presence first before you try any handling. And of course, this isn't an animal that you want to pick up. You want to get to the point where the Aki monitor can crawl into your hand on its own terms and crawl up your arm. You don't want to grab it all the time because, of course, when an animal grabs another animal in the wild, if it's not the animal's child like a lion cub or a crocodile moving its babies around, it's more than likely a predator trying to eat that animal. So you have to respect the fact that that's how things work in nature, and you have to realize that this animal isn't going to think that it's your that you're trying to be its friend right away. Now, of course, as time goes on and your Aki gets older and it gets used to your presence, of course, we're doing the proper exercises of cleaning out the enclosure, letting the animal see you little by little, putting your hand to the enclosure, getting closer to it and allowing the animal to come to you. The animal can become a very, very fun pet to interact with where you can do a bit of handling. But keep in mind, that doesn't mean the animal is going to be begging for attention every day. Some days, Thunder is just kind of sitting in, in the tank doing his own thing. And if I go to pet him, he'll kind of push into me and give me that look like, hey, but I kind of don't feel like doing that right now. And I have to respect that. You want to treat this animal like it's a companion rather than an animal that you're giving orders and the animal has to do what you say. And of course, our third subject when it comes to what it's like on Aki monitor is how difficult is the maintenance of this animal? And what I want you guys to understand is that maintenance for an Aki monitor isn't that difficult, but in order to have a rewarding experience keeping this pet, you have to be more active than you are dealing with regular species that you would find in the hobby, such as bearded dragons and leopard geckos. And what I mean by that is I'm going to use this phrase here. Active pet, active keeper. As you can see, Aki monitors are very active. Now, of course, when it comes to the maintenance of the animal, if you take a look at my enclosure, my enclosure is simple. Four by two by two, water bowl, different spots for the animal to climb on and explore, hide and thermoregulate. And of course, a digging box for the animal to completely bury its body when it wants to hydrate and shed its skin and just to add some extra security, right? Well, here's the thing about that, guys. When you have an Acumon and you have an animal with this much intelligence, just like any other animal, you want to rearrange the enclosure on a regular basis to make sure that your animal is getting some enrichment, just like rearranging a room for a child or for yourself to make sure that you're not getting bored. But because Ackies are so intelligent, for Aki monitors, I personally believe that they need more enrichment than your average reptile. If I'm going to rearrange, rearrange my Blue Tongue Skinks enclosure about once every couple of months, my Aki monitors enclosure should be rearranged once every three weeks. And it doesn't have to be everything like the cool side has been moved to the other side of the enclosure and the warm side. I mean something as simple as rinsing off the wood, adding some new pieces of wood, and changing up and changing up the decor a little bit and the arrangement of the decor just so the animal has something new to explore and it'll come and check out the changes that you've made. Because every time you put your hand in that enclosure and you change something in the decor, keep in mind that your Aki is going to go and investigate after to see what you've changed around because you've altered something in the Aki monitor's territory, in his safe haven, in his home. And I'm only saying he, of course, because Thunder, of course, my Aki monitor is a male, but that is off topic from what we're speaking about right now. When it comes to keeping an Aki monitor, when you think about how much maintenance it has to be, 
Keep in mind that once you have your initial setup, everything's simple. And of course, you want to have fun with the animal in the first place. That's why you acquired it in the first place, right? Just make sure that you're being active as well. Make sure that you're giving this animal the time and attention that it needs in order to use its brain. And you'll have the reward of, as well of an animal that'll walk right up to you, crawl, crawl up your arm. Now, not all Aki monitors are going to act exactly the same as Thunder or other members of the species that you see in captivity where they become very personable and like walking up to their keepers. Some of them just don't like handling. They have personalities just like we do. But at the same time, you want to give the best effort that you possibly can. So even if your animal isn't one of the individuals that loves handling, it won't be afraid of you. And then you'll be able to go in the enclosure and do your maintenance without worrying about the animal running and hiding all, all the time and making it uncomfortable and stressing it out. Well, I hope you guys liked that video. Thunder's over here kind of closing his eyes and kind of giving me a little look like, okay, I'm done running around outside the enclosure now. What I actually would like to do <laughs> is just chill, relax, and have my own space. So I'm actually going to remove the wood, shut the door, give Thunder his space like he deserves, and I'll talk to you guys later on. Remember to follow the Instagram. That's scales underscore 13. And shoot me a message if you want to talk about Ackies or any other reptile in the hobby or any type of subject. You'll also be able to have personal conversations with there with me where you don't have to worry about embarrassing yourself by asking a question in the comments if that's something you're self-conscious about. But of course, don't feel bad about asking questions, guys. You should never feel bad about asking questions, even if it's a novice question, because that's how we learn. You can look up the research yourself, but of course, if you're already in the middle of a video and you're seeking out knowledge, why not ask me a question or any of the other keepers? So, anyway, guys. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a good day. Bye, Thunder. I'll see you later on, buddy. <laughs> now he's being inquisitive. He wants to see what's going on in my hand. I thought you wanted me to leave you alone, buddy. I thought you wanted me to leave you alone. What do you want from me, bud? What do you want from me? <laughs> and he's probably smelling like doobie rich. He's trying to figure out where the food is. See how he's trying to dig? He's trying to dig because he thinks I'm hiding it. <laughs> that is awesome. But all right, bud, you have a little bit of of a shed on you, so I'm gonna let you get to your shed. So that way you can finish that up. All right, everybody, have a great day. Peace.